30 years before achieving the pinnacle of helicopter technology with the design of the legendary AH-64 Apache, the Hughes Aircraft Company ventured into the emerging rotor aircraft industry for the first time by attempting to develop a colossal helicopter like the world had never seen before. As the Hughes XH-17 prototype prepared for its maiden flight on October 23, 1952, pilot Gail Moore was visibly anxious. He was about to test the aircraft with the most oversized rotor in the world, with a diameter of 130 feet. The pilot knew that despite the engineering efforts, the massive hollow rotor blades were under tremendous strain, and they could snap at any moment during takeoff. Media crews from around the country gathered to witness the event, and even Howard Hughes himself was first in line. Suddenly, the jet engines ignited ferociously, and flames shot from the ends of the rotor blades, with the Los Angeles Times later reporting, quote, the whoosh whoosh of the whirring blades sounded like hundreds of artillery shells in flight. You could hear it seven or eight miles away. What happened next would be forever recorded in the history of aviation. Out of money. The XH-17 was an ambitious project requested by the U.S. Air Force. The idea was to create a powerful aerial crane capable of lifting large amounts of supplies and even artillery units across bridges, swamps, and mountains for America's war efforts around the globe. At the time, there was not a single helicopter capable of lifting such significant cargo, with the primitive Bell 47 aerial cranes only able to lift a few hundred pounds of supplies. The monumental task was undertaken by Kellett Auto Gyro Corporation. Still, as the project dragged on and the aircraft's design became ever more complex and expensive, the company realized it would not be able to complete it. The unique and ambitious propulsion system eventually left the company without funds, and Kellett was forced to try to sell the design or face bankruptcy. In a twist of fate, Howard Hughes was precisely seeking to explore rotor aircraft development and needed a worthwhile project to kickstart the helicopter division of his company. After a short period of negotiations, Hughes Aircraft bought the XH-17 design and its early propulsion prototypes for $250,000. The team at Kellett had grown very close to the project, and XH-17 lead engineer Nick Stefano recalls, quote, I can remember most of us saying, do something to get this Hughes guy out of the picture. Hughes had no experience with helicopters, and his company had limited experience with conventional aircraft. Still, the ambitious venture quickly gained steam, and a prototype began testing at the Hughes facilities in Culver City, California in 1952. A formidable craft. The development of a first fly-ready prototype was a huge undertaking, as the sheer size of the rotor was a seemingly insurmountable obstacle. Stefano remembers, quote, a 130-foot diameter rotor at the time was just inconceivable. To accelerate the construction of the daring rotorcraft prototype, parts of the XH-17 were scavenged from other aircraft. The front wheels came from a B-25 Mitchell, the rear wheels from a C-54 Skymaster, the fuel tank from a B-29 Superfortress, the cockpit from a Waco CG-15, and the tail rotor from a Sikorsky H-19. The Hughes XH-17 Sky Crane was designed with an exceptional propulsion system to carry loads surpassing 50,000 pounds. It was the first aircraft to use it, and if it performed adequately, a new generation of helicopters would adopt the technology to carry even larger loads. The propulsion system was unique because the two General Electric J35 turbojet engines were used to deliver bleed air up through the rotor hub. Meanwhile, the blades were hollow but colossal in size, with a joint diameter of 130 feet. As such, the hot, compressed air expelled by the engines traveled through the blades to tip jets where fuel was injected. Moreover, due to the blades' massive dimensions, the main rotor turned at a peaceful 88 revolutions per minute during flight less than half the speed of a typical helicopter rotor speed. Also, the rotor was driven at the tips rather than the hub, so little torque compensation was needed due to friction in the main rotor bearing. Thus, the X817 had a tiny tail rotor that contrasted with its main one, and along with the wide assortment of aircraft parts, 
the finished prototype had a distinct makeshift appearance that differed significantly from other experimental aircraft developed during the 1950s and 1960s. Testing. The testing phase for the Skycrane lasted almost three years. During that time, only one prototype was available, as the massive size of the craft made it impossible to transport, store, and test more than a single unit. The XH-17 was tested following a slow and steady procedure, as many risks were involved due to the propulsion system's nature and the rotor's size. For starters, no other helicopter had ever been fitted with such long rotor blades, and there was no precedent to guarantee they would hold during long flights. Also, the blades were hollow and each measured close to 20 meters in length, which meant they had a short service life and could actually snap at any moment during the trials. The issue of who would pilot the perilous aircraft was also of great importance to Hughes. Until that date, they had no helicopter division and thus no helicopter pilots, much less one who would be qualified to operate the rotorcraft with the most oversized rotor in history. Fortunately, Gail Moore stepped up to the task. The pilot had joined Los Angeles Airways in 1948 to fly Sikorsky S-51 helicopters, and after becoming a prominent helicopter pilot, he began to seek a more significant challenge. Moore then joined Hughes Aircraft, just as the corporation started to venture into the field of helicopters, making him the ideal candidate to fly the massive sky crane. The aircraft's first ever flight took place on September 16, 1952, and it was just a short hover, with the sky crane only rising about a foot above the ground. Still, the experience was exhilarating. Moore slowly pulled collective pitch, and the craft lurched into the air almost violently. He then lowered the pitch lever and raised it again without soothing the irregular movements before settling on the ground with a solid thud. The pilot would later say, quote, The flight was like riding a pogo stick in a sitting position. Up. Down. Up. Down. Maiden Flight Flight analysis of the groundbreaking test revealed that the Sky Crane's controls were more sensitive than those of the S-51. Thus, the pilot would need to try a whole new approach to flying. By October 23, 1952, Moore had honed his XH-17 piloting skills, and Hughes was ready to show the world how the massive Sky Crane worked. The transcendental moment took place at the Hughes facilities in Culver City, California. The event was a historical occurrence as it not only featured the largest rotor in any aircraft, but also signaled the official birth of the Hughes Aircraft Helicopter Division. The businessman himself was there, anxious to see the future of his enterprise take flight. Surrounded by news crews from media chains across America, the XH-17 was ready to launch before the eyes of the nation. And despite his previous experience, Gail Moore was suddenly concerned about his abilities as a test pilot. He'd been a helicopter pilot for just a few years, and the massive media presence made him self-conscious. Years later, he would talk about his experience that day. Quote, I felt very conspicuous as I stepped out of my car. I hoped this wouldn't be the day we made any big mistakes. Howard Hughes himself would be in the audience. I had to admit to a little bit of stage fright. As the blade-tipped jet engines on the helicopter flared up, and a burst of flames was propelled from the ends of the rotor blades, the most remarkable rotor aircraft in history was ignited, and the noise it made was so deafening that it could be heard miles away. Military officials would compare the sound to the continuous shelling of an artillery barrage. As Hughes watched meticulously, Moore made a calculated vertical ascent, gone with the pogo-like movements of the previous test, as the pilot had now mastered the helicopter's controls. The sky crane hovered around the airfield for approximately 10 minutes, then dashed forward and backward to end the spectacle by making a series of full circles in different directions. Aftermath The public display was a tremendous success, and although the Skycrane project would be cancelled soon after the event, the objective was achieved. Hughes Aircraft had successfully begun its helicopter enterprise, while also proving that its particular propulsion system worked. The Hughes XH-17 became the basis for the XH-28, another aerial crane developed by Hughes, and it eventually became the starting point 
for many large helicopters of the modern era. Hughes would also become a household name in rotorcraft technology, and his company's efforts would culminate decades later after designing the most capable attack helicopter in the world, the AH-64 Apache. To this day, the XH-17 is considered the aircraft with the largest rotor diameter to have successfully taken to the skies. Thank you for watching our video. If you like the story about this remarkable aircraft, don't hesitate to click on your screen and check out our other Dark Documentaries channels, where we explore the most thrilling human stories and the fascinating machines that changed the course of history. Stay tuned.